The Magic Flight by Joseph Campbell. Another well-known variety of the magic flight is one in which a number of delaying obstacles are tossed behind by the wildly fleeing hero. A little brother and sister were playing by a spring, and as they did so, suddenly tumbled in. There was a water hag down there, and this water hag said, Now I have you. Now you shall work your heads off for me. And she carried them away with her. She gave to the little girl a tangle of filthy flax to spin and made her fetch water in a bottomless tub. The boy had to chop a tree with a blunt axe, and all they ever had to eat were stone-hard lumps of dough. So at last the children became so impatient that they waited until one Sunday when the hag had gone to church and escaped. When church let out, the hag discovered that her birds had flown, and so made after them with mighty bounds. But the children espied her from afar, and the little girl threw back a hairbrush, which immediately turned into a big brush mountain with thousands and thousands of bristles, over which the hag found it very difficult to climb. Nevertheless, she finally appeared. As soon as the children saw her, the boy threw back a comb, which immediately turned into a big comb mountain with a thousand times a thousand spikes. But the hag knew how to catch hold of these, and at last she made her way through. Then a little girl threw back a mirror, and this turned into a mere mountain, which was so smooth that the hag was unable to get over. Thought she, I shall hurry back home and get my axe and chop the mere mountain in two. But by the time she got back and demolished the glass, the children were long since far away, and the water hag had to trudge back again to her spring. The powers of the abyss are not to be challenged lightly. In the Orient, a great point is made of the danger of undertaking the psychologically disturbing practices of yoga without competent supervision. The meditations of the postulant have to be adjusted to his progress so that the imagination may be defended at every step by devadas envisioned adequate deities until the moment comes for the prepared spirit to step alone beyond. As Dr. Young was very wisely observing, the incomparably useful function of the dogmatic symbol is that it protects a person from a direct experience of God as long as he does not mischievously expose himself. But if he leaves home and family, lives too long alone, and gazes too deeply into the dark mirror, then the awful event of the meeting may befall him. Yet, even then, the traditional symbol, come to full flower through the centuries, may operate like a healing drought and divert the fatal incursion of the living Godhead into the hallowed spaces of the church. The magic objects tossed behind by the panic-ridden hero, protective interpretations, principles, symbols, rationalizations, anything, delay and absorb the power of the started hound of heaven, permitting the adventurer to come back into his fold safe and with perhaps a boon. But the toll required is not always slight. Out of the most shocking of the obstacle flights is that of the Greek hero Jason. He had set forth to win the golden fleece, putting to sea in the magnificent Argo with a great company of warriors. He had sailed in the direction of the Black Sea, and though delayed by many fabulous dangers, arrived at last miles beyond the Bosporus at the city and palace of King Aetes. Behind the palace was the grove and tree of the dragon-guarded prize. Now the daughter of the king, Medea, conceived an overpowering passion for the illustrious foreign visitor, and when her father imposed an impossible task as the price of the golden fleece, compounded charms that enabled him to succeed. The task was to plow a certain field, employing bulls of flaming breath and brazen feet, then to sow the field with the dragon's teeth and slay the armed men who should immediately spring into being. But with his body and armor anointed with Medea's charm, Jason mastered the bulls, and when the enemy army sprang from the dragon's seed, he tossed a stone into their midst, which turned them face to face, and they slew each other to the man. The infatuated young woman conducted Jason to the oak from which hung the fleece. The guarding dragon was distinguished by a crest, a three-forked tongue, and nastily hooked fangs. 
but with the juice of a certain herb, the couple put the formidable monster to sleep. Then Jason snatched the prize. Medea ran with him, and the Argo put to sea, but the king was soon in swift pursuit. And when Medea perceived that his sails were cutting down their lead, she persuaded Jason to kill Epsirtos, her younger brother, whom she had carried off, and toss the pieces of the dismembered body into the sea. This forced King Aetes, her father, to put about, rescue the fragments, and go ashore to give them decent burial. Meanwhile, the Argo ran with the wind and passed from his ken. A Hero with a Thousand Faces by Joseph Campbell